Welcome to the beautiful east coast of the North Island of New Zealand, home to spectacular coastlines, incredible geography above and below water, and home to some fantastic diving. The aim was to explore some new coastline over two days and gather some much needed fresh seafood. On the first day, I get out with the local Harangi and we get into some awesome diving. We were greeted with fantastic conditions and just big cracks full of power. Amazing. It's a welcome sight for a diver like me growing up on the shores of Auckland further north due to the water being a bit warmer, population, overfishing, a whole lot of factors. We just don't see sights like this. Power, just a fantastic eating shellfish, one of my favourites. So I'm very excited at the amount of power I'm finding. I only pick off one or two power from each patch, just as I would with harvesting a few crayfish. Keeps the nests healthy and uh, more for another time or for someone else. Not the most clearest water, but hey, when you can dive off the beach and get big mature power and crayfish, no one's complaining. After gathering a few power that was onto the crayfish, which seemed to be in every crack and every ledge, good numbers, good to see. More power here, amazing. Started to pick off a few crayfish and that was enough for the afternoon, awesome. After driving down the coast that afternoon after the dive to an even more remote location, I found a spot which looked amazing. Up bright and early and I was into it. I love diving off the shore just as much off a boat or a kayak. Love to mix it up and it's good to show everyone you don't need the big flash boat to go get a feed of fresh seafood. Just get into it guys, it's all there waiting for you. Morning everyone, Holly here. Welcome back to another Primal Pursuit mission back here in New Zealand. It's been about two months since I've had a dive, so pumped back from Samoa. We're here in the beautiful coast of New Zealand. I won't say exactly where, just camping the night in the car and um, yeah, we're gonna jump in here and go for a swim, see if we can get a couple of craze. There's actually a power uh, no take reserve here. I didn't know about, just seen the sign, so Yep, try and get a couple of crays and hopefully some fish to take home. I did dive yesterday, we did get some power, so yeah, top the bag up and um, see what's around. Never dive here, so pretty excited. Set up today for shore dive. Just got my uh, small line bungee float, got my measure, fins, one meter reel gun. As I entered the water, the sun was just peeking up over the horizon. My favourite time to go spearfishing. The water was filled at the top of the column with this weird salty stuff. Very, very thick in some places. I was just cruising along and I spotted this eel below. Freshwater eel by the looks of it. I've never seen these in the ocean before. There must have been a river outlet nearby. It looked to be perhaps a long fin eel. Not quite sure. But uh, I just let that one go even though they are very tasty. Funnily enough it leads me to a big crack full of crayfish. I didn't have a catch bag however so I thought I'll come back at the end of the dive and grab a few crays to take home. Nice volcanic formations and ledges and all sorts which extended out into the ocean here made for great diving and a great habitat for crayfish to hide in. I dive back down just to assess the crack once more ready to come back later and notice there's crayfish all around the place a nice big one in this cave here. I'm not sure the reason but when you find areas which are nice and bouldery like this and it has all the silt on the bottom it always tends to hold crayfish 
shouldn't be hard to grab a few crays at the end of the dive. I planned to harvest a few fish this day, it had been months since I'd been in the water at home and no fish left in the freezer. A nice blue mucky shows itself and I get a nice shot off. Little did I know, I would see huge numbers of these fish later in the dive but going off the previous day's dive I wasn't too confident, didn't want to take any chances and when a fish presents itself I was ready to take it so fish on the board and I'm pretty stoked. An excellent eating fish, blue muki, and one I don't see very commonly up north. Now I wouldn't usually tow fish around like this on a float up near Auckland waters as there's an abundance of bronze whaler sharks ready to tax your fish but not so many sharks further down here so so clipped it on and that just tows behind nicely. I always gut my fish in the water, improves eating quality and saves a clean up later when filleting. With such clean water, I could see crayfish below coming out of cracks and boulders. This one had come out within a matter of minutes to try and steal the guts from my fish. Speaking of scavengers, here's a little snapper coming in for a free feed. I wasn't quite sure if it was legal or not. That's the great thing about spearfishing, you can be selective, so that fish lived another day. There's not many dives I can remember where you can spot crayfish 10 to 15 meters down below. Another nice crayfish here emerging from this rock. But with no catch bag, I let this one go as well. Plenty around to grab later. I encounter another blue mookie coming in to examine me. I get a much better shot off this time, dropping the fish straight into the kelp. You can see how I hold the gun out in front of the fish and wait till the fish swims in front of the end of the spear gun. It's a good technique, especially for fast moving fish like kahawai. I'm on the harvest today. I've got a big family and a few friends which uh, know me as the fishmonger so I spot a few butterfish below it's nice to mix up the bag and I absolutely love these fish the best burgers crumbed butterfish burgers as when hunting most species but it really works well with the butterfish is just getting down as low as you can into the kelp beds the fish become relaxed and where you spotted one or two, suddenly six, seven, eight butterfish will emerge. From there, acting casual, keeping your head down, just wait for the right opportunity, stretch out and get the shot off. Here's a nice big butterfish, not the best shot, mid body, but it's secure and it's another beautiful fish for the table. Looking back on footage, it looks like my spear is shooting to the left, potentially bent. Always pays to check your gear before you go out guys. It's also my mother's favourite fish so I need to make sure I get one for her as well. Once again down in the kelp, staying low, the butterfish are feeling more comfortable. This one's coming in for a look. Wait for the chance, broadside, take the shot. Awesome, another butterfish.
staying true to the local reserve marine rules there was a no take on kinna so no smashing up kinna today for a burly the snapper there weren't a huge amount of fish around also so i didn't want to waste any fish cutting one up for a ground bait so i was on the hunt there's a nice patchy area of broken kelp and sand perfect territory for john dory ball fish in the right locations and there it is i spot a nice john dory just sit in there in the kelp. After a while you'll get your eye in for these fish. Sink down slowly, slowly and try and get the right angle to get a shot off. I could stab the fish but don't want to risk it. It's a very nice big John Dory. The fish goes to take off and I get a shot through the head. It's a beautiful John Dory. You can hear the trademark grunting of the fish here. It's quite funny. Cruising back to the start point, I notice another famous fish in New Zealand, the blue cod. In abundance down south, but again, a fish that we don't see commonly up north. I sink down to take my chance, I line it up, it looks like it's going to be a clean shot through the head, but unfortunately the fish rips off. Devastated, I hate injuring fish, and especially losing a tasty fish like this. Make it back up, reload the spare gun and I'm back down hunting in the boulders. I just can't find it, but I'm amazed to see the crayfish having emerged after only a minute or two, scavenging for a free feed. After a few attempts looking, no luck, so free feed for the crayfish this day. Oh, what a wicked little morning dive that was. Very successful. Bag full of fish. There's a good amount of craze up there and I just had nowhere to put any so I've gone and got my my bush buck bag and um, yeah, it's gonna be the catch bag. We'll go fill that up with a couple of craze. I couldn't find, no matter how hard I tried, the original craze nest I found in the morning with some nice big craze in it, but not a problem. There were crayfish everywhere, so I found a nice little nest here. Small tussle, and I've got one of my crays. Beautiful. Stuffed that into the bag, zipped her up, chucked it on the back and swum off. The old red mokey trick, I've said it before and I'll say it again, follow the red mokey. There's always a cave or two nearby and sure enough, caves and cracks and another crayfish right here. Missed that one but moved on, plenty of options. Here's another one, you can see their feelers sticking out, clear giveaway. Ease my way in. Slowly going for the grab, missed that one as well. Lucky there's plenty of options to practice. Some nice crays there. I'm just looking for a bit of a bigger cray since I'm only allowed three, get a good size one. Missed that one again. Here's a good one. Grab this one by the horns and got my second cray. I spot this crayfish just walking around in the middle of nowhere. Not a common occurrence in the daylight but lucky enough this cray it was a bit small on its way it went. Here's some nice crays. I spot a good nest in here with some nice sized crayfish. One more easy grab and I've got my three crays. Beautiful. 
swimming back with my craze and I encounter this huge school of blue moki. They are everywhere, good size too. With this fish such a rare occurrence up north and tasting so good I decide to take one last fish for the day and find these nice sized moki just milling in this gutter. Get a nice shot off right through the head. The classic backflip and I'm stoked. An epic morning spearfishing in the fridge and freezer stocked up once again. Guys, got the craze back in, and um, oh, just how lucky we are in New Zealand after coming back from Samoa and really working for the catch. Come back here to New Zealand, and it's just it's just too easy, it really is. Here's some of the beautiful catch from today big John Dory, arguably one of the best eating fish in New Zealand. Most people agree beautiful it's a nice craze got some more fish in there big blue moki I think these are excellent eating heaps of those around some big butterfish my favorite crumbed up just too good right so got our catch had an awesome dive gonna cruise home it's quite a long trip it's gonna take most of the day and we'll have a uh, have a cook up later, so stay around. All right, just at the brother's house, brother-in-law, Albert, and uh, Gonna get a bit of a what do you call it? Hey? Not oka, it's not the same. How do you call a raw fish dish? Ikamata. Ikamata. Yeah, that's the one. Ikamata is raw. Ikas fish, so it could be Ikas fish, mata's raw, ikamata. Yeah. So. so like just like white meat, tinny meat, red meat. Ooh. So this is your uh your coconut? Crate coconut? Do a bit of the blue mikey. It's gonna be mint. So this fresh uh, coconut milk, it's yeah, the stuff in the cans is just it's rubbish really, full of crap. Oh good for you. It just doesn't compare. <laughs> so you husk all the coconut out and then just give it a good good bloody squeeze and get the good stuff out. So you pretty much just grab it's enough for you to squeeze up. And then that's oh. not enough water in it. Dry, you eh? see that? See oh, that's that? coming. Yeah, yeah. That's what you want. The good thick stuff, eh? Mm. There we go. Albert's from uh, Mulki, Cook Islands. Went over there quite a few years ago, but I wasn't um, into spearfishing yet, so I'm waiting for Albert to uh, he head back over so I can get back <laughs> there for some spearfishing. <laughs> yeah, I was too young, too interested in drinking, not diving, so looking forward to getting back over there. Yeah. One day, one day. Fish was a bit cold, so fish is cold, yeah. Cold coconuts clumped yeah. up a bit, but um, that's why. That's why I tried that. Tastes the same. Bloody good. G'day guys, back home. What a wicked little trip down to Sport X, somewhere on the North Island, New Zealand. Um, it was awesome. Cheers, Harangi, for taking me out for a dive. That was a wicked man. We'll get back down there sometime. If any of you boys around there up in Auckland, give me a shout out and I'll see if I can uh, return the favour. Anyways, let's go fillet this fish and then we're going to have a, a bit of a cook up for dinner. A couple of fish left to fillet. Did the rounds yesterday. Dropped off to family and friends. So there's a couple of power left, a couple of fish. So that's what it's about to share the catch around, guys. Let's go fillet and then we're going to do just a classic JD pan fried skin on with some salad for dinner so if you don't want to stick around for the cook up thanks for watching summer's just kicking in again new zealand so far out. we've got some awesome missions planned yeah cheers for uh, taking the time to watch the video leave a comment if you want subscribe if you haven't and you want to see more content it really helps me out algorithms and all that stuff on youtube so more people can see uh 
the underwater world that we've got and um, it's great to inspire people and get them underwater because it's fantastic for your physical mental health and you can bring some fresh uh, seafood home so it's pretty cool I don't think there's any sport that compares if you want to support the channel primalpursuit.co.nz hats and tees and stuff right getting home next up was the filleting and processing got my trusty victory knives and here I'm starting with the blue mocky nice big fish once again, I start with a cut behind the pictorial fin on the angle. Guts has been removed in the water, as usual, so it's a nice, clean, easy fillet process. Down the spine, work your way along, skimming over the backbones and spine. Beautiful white flesh. Down the underside, skimming over the centre spine, down the rib cage and the fillet comes off nice and easy. Next up, we have the famous John Dory, the fish with the black dot in the middle, the target. Same again, behind the pictorial fin, down the spine, I find the flesh comes off these fish quite easily. Incredible, incredible flesh, almost translucent, great eating. Over the spine, over the rib cage, and off comes the beautiful fillet. I'll leave the skin on this fish. It's excellent fried up, nice and crispy. And the old humble butterfish. Pretty much all fish are the same in New Zealand to fillet. Down the spine, over the rib cage and it all comes off. Once again, the beautiful white fillet, all great eating fish these. I'll keep the skin on this one, just as I did with the John Dory. Last but not least, the crayfish and the pawa. My favorite way to do these, just the classic split down the middle, break them in half, remove the poo tube, leave all the guts and the brain up in the middle. That's all the good flavor. And then fill them up with some garlic and butter. I've only got the bought stuff today, but it'll do. For the power, save the hassle of beating them up. One minute blanch in boiling water, pop them out. Slice them up thinly, onions, cream, and a few other secret ingredients. And it makes for a beautiful creamy power those beautifully grilled crayfish, get them on the plate and douse them in the beautiful creamed power onion mix. It is incredible. We're living like kings at the moment. How good. After the entree of power and cray, time for some classic fried John Dory. I like to keep it simple because it's such a delicate tasty flesh salt and butter skin on in the pan get it hot get that skin crispy served with the side of salad and wow very very tasty can't complain squeeze of lemon and it's good to go stunning stunning fish couple of butterfish fillets. These freeze really well, the best of all fish I've tried. Vacuum sealed, they'll last for months and actually gain a bit of flavour over time I've found. Squeaky the cat, liked the blue mocky. Thumbs up from her. A couple of power for a rainy day. These are a real treat for me. So we'll do another cream power another day. Thanks for tuning in everyone. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I hope you got something out of it. And at least I hope I've inspired a few of you to get out there into nature. Especially for spear fishing. It's an excellent sport. Even if you don't come home with a catch, you're getting some exercise and refreshing the mind. Good luck out there and I'll see you on the next episode. Cheers guys.